Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. Today, we're going to be interviewing Jamie. And Jamie not only is a phenomenal mother, she's also a businesswoman, and she just graduated from the Booty Bands Accountability Program. And you know what I just heard her say is she's now ready to be a coach, working with members one-on-one to help them experience the amazing breakthroughs that she just went through. So today our topic is going to be about how we can start to break through those excuses and really start to step into our powerful self. So let's go ahead and get started. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. Great. I think a lot of moms and just busy women in general, whether that's careers or family, whatever they've chosen in their life that have become busy, one of the most difficult things that they are facing is just making themselves a priority. And you mentioned something that was really profound about what that really looks like and that kind of aha moment for you. So what was it for you? Well, I realized that I just was not making myself myself a priority, whether because I didn't think I was worth it. And we've gone through like my loop and my issues and my past. I suddenly realized that the reason why I never really made time was because I didn't think it was that important or like myself, me doing that for me was not important. It was not a priority at all. I like that you mentioned that because I've been able to speak to a lot of women about their core beliefs. And what I'm finding is that busy women and these moms, their core beliefs are, I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. I'm not pure or I'm not smart enough or I'm not successful, whatever it is, right? There's so Mm -hmm. much of this like deep belief. I call it like a sponsored thought. Like what's the thought underneath the thought? And a lot of times that thought underneath the thought is like, I'm not worthy. And so no wonder it's a, a great realization that if you're saying I don't have time, that that belief system can be like, basically you're, you're right. Right. Like, I mean, it's just like a total realization that if like you, if you say something that's going to manifest itself. Yes. I have time for work. I have time for that I do around the house that I know I have to do because I know I have to do them. I think they are priorities. So is it really that I don't have time or that I just give the time that I have to the other things and not be like, this is my time to do this. I like that you mentioned as far as excuses. I want to go down that path. You mentioned time. That's a very common one amongst busy women. It was for me. It was for me, like 100%. I thought I did not have time. Yeah. I and thought, I, like, I truly believed I did not have time. Totally. We can believe our own excuses, right? And so I want to actually, I think this is a great conversation about talking about how we can go towards our excuses to find our solutions. And so I want to, I'm going to give a demonstration here, and I want you to think of some that would be for you. For me, when I would say I don't have time, I I went towards it by saying, well, what do you not have time for? And the reality of it was, well, an hour long workout, because technically it's going to take about a two hour ordeal. So I don't have a time for a two hour ordeal. So then I had to go towards it even further and say, well, well, then what do you have time for? That makes sense. And then I sat there and went, well, I guess I have time for 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. But then the other part of you comes in and goes, but is that enough? And so then I had to to go towards that and do a bunch of research to find out is 15 to 20 minutes of a workout actually enough. And what I found is this in cardio, you're only going to be burning the amount of calories within that amount of time of cardio. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing resistance training, You're going to be burning calories up to 24 to 48 hours afterwards. Sometimes what you're doing is you're building that lean muscle, which you and I know is our metabolism. So in reality, that 15, 20 minutes, not only are you actually going to be getting long-term results and building your metabolism to burn the fat, but on top of that, the muscle memory, I didn't realize that this was a thing. And what I learned is that women that are in their sixties that have lifted weights in their previous younger life, they're able to snap back so much quicker than those that have never lifted weights to begin with. So what I'm realizing and seeing in the community right now 
is that muscle memory is a thing. It allows you to kind of bounce back a lot quicker. So now I know that no such thing as a wasted workout, that 15, 20 minutes absolutely is going to make that difference, whether if it's for your body or even for your mindset, your own psyche for that, just that moment of a break for yourself. Anything come up for you as far as going towards an excuse that you've, you've been able to come up with? Oh, that's actually a pretty big one because the thing that sold me here was that, hey, it's 15 minutes. Like you have no time, but I bet you can find 15 minutes. To me, that first step for me was sort of a a trusting exercise. I was like, I'm ready to have somebody else who has more knowledge than me to like figure this out (laughs) for themselves. And I'll just do it. I'll find the 15 minutes and just start. We're all used to instant, like, I want results in a week. I just realized it was fine. I could focus on one day at a time. I trusted that this works. A lot of women have done it. That You know more than me. I'm just going to do one day at a time, the 15 minutes, that one workout, just do it. I did the first part, which was finding the time. I developed the habit to the point where I miss it. Like the days I don't, that I'm supposed to rest and recover. I'm like, do I have to rest and recover? Or can I actually just <laughs> do something, <laughs> keep going? Because I feel like I, I miss it now. Um, so that was like the second part of the whole thing for me. And the third part was, it's sort of a like a slow burn in the beginning. In the beginning, you're like getting used to it. You're like, am I getting results? Is, is, my, is my booty bigger finally? But then suddenly everything sort of explodes and it's, it's sort of exponential. You suddenly, like all these little things that you have put together will give you a result. And then you get that extra shot of motivation, which has been fantastic for me. Yeah. Super, super inspiring for, for myself. And I feel like, oh yeah, I did it. And I will keep going. Yeah. I love that you even mentioned something about getting stronger. You said you're starting to feel that as far as a difference too in your body. Oh, definitely. Night and day difference. Um, And I just have not, it had not clicked in my mind that I just was not eating right. Because like I, I told you before that my stress eating, for example, because I had no time was no eating. I would skip meals like nothing because, you know, it's not priority for me I just had to finish the thing that I had to finish and I would just keep a meal and just keep going and then try to have motivation for exercise but then I was tired and then I'm like I don't want to exercise I mean I'm not eating the things that I'm supposed to so no wonder right but those those things have changed and now I have youthful strength I mean I'm not just lifting weights for lifting weights although they're fun enough but I, it's just useful for me, like getting up, getting down, squatting, <laughs> regular stuff. And I don't feel like I'm a brick in half when I do it. I mean, I'm 40 and that is good news. You're seeing the decline of everything. You're seeing the metabolism going down, the muscle, the energy, all this is kind of like deteriorating. And so you're just kind of like, At some point, I remember feeling really lost in my journey and I spent about a decade trying to get into my sculpted tone self. And I remember just like kind of getting to a point of trying everything and then just feeling utterly hopeless. And it was very similar to that cycle that you just mentioned. It would not prioritize myself. So then I would skip a meal. Then I would have extremely low energy. So I wouldn't do a workout. And then I would just kind of repeat that over and over and over. At some point I thought, well, geez, I'm basically skipping meals. Why am I not like fit? You know, why am I not sculpted at this point? Because you think like, geez, if it's a calories in calories out or or move more, (laughs) eat less type of reality, you think, well, geez, I should be at my goals. Like I'm not even eating that much. In reality, you're looking at the way that your clothes are fitting and you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't look so good. (laughs) So I do, I think going towards yourself, has been the most impactful thing. So we said time. Can you think of any other excuse that maybe women that are listening have when it comes to like reaching their goals? Time is number one. Age is number two for me. It was, I mean, age in the sense of, can I really do this? I mean, I'm 40 and people say this and that stuff you hear. I'm already 40. 
I have a busy job. I have teenage kids. My body, I have two babies, so my body is like already different. Is it really possible that I can have a change at this point? So that's that was a, a really big one for me when I started this whole thing. I was not calculating right. I was using calories. That way it was easy to skip a meal, to just not do this or that. And due to my strong willpower, I could easily skip a meal, which I'm not to be proud of, to be honest. I just, I'll use my willpower in a different way to stick to this. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, let's talk about age. That's a great one that you just brought up. So I've heard, I've heard that multiple times. And even for me, I've definitely experienced that as well. Thinking of, man, I'm just too old, right? And everything's against me. So it's like, if I'm working against time, am I really going to make progress? I like the idea there that you were kind of going down a route of working smarter, not harder. So if it's, yeah, focusing on calories, then what you're doing is you're just looking at a number overall of what you're eating rather than the actual substance of the fuel that you're putting in your body. And how I really kind of look at it now when I think of calories that makes the most sense for me is a donut can be 100 calories, but also a protein shake can be 100 calories, but can have drastically, vastly different fuel for your body. One's going to feed the fat, the other one's going to feed the muscle that's going to burn the fat. And so for me, that's why calories are so irrelevant for me now as I kind of look at it in that perspective. Going back to the age, I have a friend that's 62 years old. She she makes 60 look like the new 20s. She has no part in her mind of I'm old, I'm slowing down, I'm not doing, like she just, it's really like I ter- I've seen that like that age can be just a number for people. And if we're telling ourselves I'm old, well, then you're going to be right because right. we're the ones that are programming our minds. Mm-hmm. It's called the reticular activating system. We're going to literally filter our life to create that reality. And so what I see her and how she lives is she goes, oh, absolutely not. Age is a number. Let's go. And I can't keep up with this woman. And it's so motivating to be around her because of just that mindset that she has. And so that would be whatever whatever it is for people, right? It would be going towards it. So it'd be kind of asking those questions. Well, what makes you old? Why do you think you're old? And can you reverse time? Absolutely. We're showing right now in this program that if you're building that lean muscle, you're reversing that aging weight gain. You're bringing back yourself back to that 20-year-old self, that lean muscle mass to bring your metabolism where it needs to be. Holy Hannah, that's a great feeling to feel like you can get stronger even though you're getting older. True. And I actually feel better. I feel stronger than I've ever been. I never expected that, which is one of those extra side effects that I've been getting from this. And I also, I think I mentioned to you, although thinking of excuses, there's one of those things that things a bit of a procrastinator. I mean, procrastination may be a thing with me, but since you are essentially committing to just like give yourself this 15 minutes. It's, it's kind of hard to say no to that. Like, oh, well, because if you think, oh, I'm, I had need two hours to work out. It's like uh, procrastination mode sets in because you think, especially if you're like me, you think you have no time. So, you know, two hours is a lot of time. So you start procrastinating. So I think that was one of those other excuses that I had. Will I be able to do this? And honestly, I, I wasn't sure if I could. I was I was afraid it was going to be a thing that I start and don't finish or just like leave off. But it turned out that you just do it in a certain way, start step by step, just little by little, and it'll build up. I like quite that. Faster, quite faster than you than you think. Yeah. Yeah. Procrastination is a big one. I like that you said it's a fear of failure that really mm, starts yeah. to cripple people in even wanting to start anything because they failed maybe other things in their life. And that that was so gut wrenching to have to have gone through that experience to do it again just is traumatic. PTSD in a way. Okay, let's think of another one as far as, okay, energy. I don't have energy. That's another common one I hear. There's two things really with energy. One is you just really don't have energy. You really actually do need to sleep and you need to listen to your body and be gentle with yourself and, and give yourself the break. So there's that. 
Then there's the other part of me that's kind of in that like lazy procrastinator thing that you <laughs> mentioned earlier that like, oh, I know I should, but I don't want to. And I'm in that low energy. I did a trick with myself. One is I went and sat on the couch and asked myself, did I gain more energy? Or if I go do a workout, I timed it to see what amount of time I actually feel a boost of energy. And for me, it was two minutes. As soon as I was able to get my heart, my body moving, the endorphins going, immediately I felt good and didn't regret it within just two minutes of my workout. So now when I say I don't have energy, Mm -hmm. I tell myself two minutes and I'm going to get some energy. Yeah, I have found that to be true, actually. Even yesterday, I was like, I, I'm during this time before my period, energy for me becomes a little bit lower. So what I have learned to do is find a workout that I don't, at least in my mind, doesn't feel like it's going to take a lot, but I, I'm not going to skip it because I know once I start, I'm actually going to feel better because just doing it, gives me already that shot of energy just starting it so i just trick my mind a little bit into finding something within the app where i think it's not gonna be like jumping around or anything just do something pick one and it turns out i get the energy and actually i ended up doing two two workouts so (laughs) work for me i love that I love that. That's awesome. All right. Can you think of any other excuses that you've maybe have felt or people have maybe listening might be experiencing? This is me listening to other ladies that I know, friends or from from hobbies that I have. I think women are afraid of like bulking up or looking a certain way. They're like, but if I eat all this, isn't that going to make me bigger? I think it's just not knowing about the nutrition part and stuff like that. And I think for me, it was... It could have been an excuse because I have people in my family who are, let's say, large in the sense that they're very muscly, can easily gain muscle. And I had never, in my youth, whenever I worked out, because I actually kind of like working out since I was younger, though I was not doing it correctly, nutrition-wise, etc. I had never picked up a weight to do anything arm related that was bigger than like five pounds or four pounds or something this is when i was young and now me at 40 like i'll pick it up i never thought i would be handling like the kind of way that i'm handling now and i'm i'm doing it and even though i'm doing more than five i mean i have not i have actually seen a change in me and i didn't expect the arm change so quickly actually and that's one of the things that i saw first I didn't become like bulky. I just lost some fat. So that's that was that was one thing that s- sort of made me hesitant sometimes. She said that I have to pull this up because I think it's so important to educate women, especially when it comes to bulky, because I totally feel you. I have obesity that runs in my family and I always felt big boned in general. I'm pretty tall as a girl. And so I always felt like I was always the masculine one of my group. But this, what I thought was really interesting as I was going through my fitness and transformation and what have you is there's a good, I, I like to break it down in just a four types of training. One is endurance. And this is where it's really great for your heart. And if you're wanting to run a marathon and you want to be able to have that endurance to run a marathon. And so what women gravitate usually is the treadmill or the bicycle or the ellipticals and doing anything cardio based because we've always heard eat less, move more. So we just gravitate towards those calorie burners where we're sweating. And so those are high repetitions, about three sets. And so what we found is that you'll lose weight. But the problem with that losing weight is you don't know if it's coming from muscle or fat. And if you're very much could be actually losing muscle while you're in the endurance type of training, hence the reason if you look at a marathon runner, they will not have a booty usually because they've burned their muscle down. So they really kind of left with this more soft, skinny look rather than like a very curvy, structured, tight toned look that you would see more with like a sprinter body. The next type of training is hypertrophy. 
And this training is the one that we really utilize a lot in booty bands and barbells. And this is focusing more on firmer sculpted looking body, whether it's arms or upper body. And so hypertrophy is more of where instead of just doing full body exercises all the time, you can see in the app, we are focusing on like just a booty and legs day, and then we'll do just an upper body day and then just a a core day. And what that isolation of those muscle groups is doing is it's putting your main focus in that area, the entire workout. So you're going to be building that lean muscle, which helps shape your body better and also give you a lot faster results because you're building that metabolism. So the repetitions you'll notice are lower though. So about seven to 15 reps and your sets are about three to four. And then the next one down is strength training. And this is also something we utilize. So we utilize the strength as well. And this is something that's not as much as like an outside experience, more of like an inside. And what it does is it also helps counteract and help the hypertrophy one, because when you're getting stronger, you can lift more weight, which is going to give you better results in hypertrophy. So those two really go hand in hand. And so you're going to notice the reps are only three to six reps. And the sets go a little bit higher there. And so what's great is we kind of target in there but the problem, the, the fear is that girls, when they think about lifting heavy, is they think it's the bottom one, power. <laughs> and that is where, okay, look at how many reps that is. How many reps is that? It's one or two. One to two reps. So you have to be pulling some pretty dang heavy weight to only get one to two reps. And this is like the power lifting type of training. And so when, when women are fearful of getting really big and bulky, I go, well, are you only lifting one or two reps in 500 pounds? And they're like, no, not at all. I'm <laughs> lifting two pounds for like a hundred repetitions. And I'm like, okay, well then you're in endurance training. And what you're doing is you're kind of spinning in circles. Cause you're really don't knowing if you're building or burning muscle in that particular type of training. And so it's fascinating to kind of have them go through the experience like you are and start to feel the strength and the shaping of your body and women going, I'm going to go lift some heavier weight on my hip thrust. And I'm like, yes, the best feeling ever. And they start to see their booty really starting to get that growth because too high of reps and too little of weight, you're not going to see much growth in the, in the booty. Exactly. I've progressed a lot. Recently, I bought those booty bands, the, the black barbell weights the black plates that was like that's my Everest when I get to that I'm gonna (laughs) and I I'm finally there like I never thought I would be like holding plates like nothing it's crazy it's crazy but um makes me very happy so thank you thank you right I'm so with you I am so with you I remember same experience for me just only doing cardio and and thinking that this the more I sweat the faster my results were going to come that's literally the way my mindset used to work for about yeah. a decade and it wasn't until I hired a coach and he put me on some heavy weights and I was like I'm gonna look like a man you're eating you're making me eat way too much and I'm lifting all this weight I'm for sure gonna look like a man and it was the tightest and smallest and sculpted I've ever been in my life and and I love it when I hear women say I'm eating so much but how is my waist shrinking so, it's very cool. And oftentimes women will be like, get faster results. I'm like, eat more. And they're like, no, like it's such a bad <laughs> way for them. They're like, how is that even possible? Yes. It's mind blowing actually. <laughs> Excuse uh, that came up recently this week. And it was uh, some girl twisted her ankle at work. It's like, well, got to give up now. And I'm like, because of an ankle, you're giving up on your core, your upper body, your back, your shoulders, your chest, your your glutes. I mean, like we could be doing so many other things. And it was so interesting how one little thing can kind of flip somebody over the edge. And so it was really right. about working on that mindset piece to just being like, whoa. And so it's been a 180 flip. It's so cool to see her now just crushing her goals. And, and what she does now, I heard this from her today. She said, the old me would have went and did a workout And if I couldn't do it, she would have given up. But now she finds a modification of what she can do. And I'm just like. So true. I actually think I would have been the same, mostly because I don't like starting and stopping. Maybe it's a it's a mindset thing to me. It's like, oh, I failed. Like start again. Just thinking about it, start again. It just bothers the hell out of me. Just start again. 
I don't like it. So now I don't really think that way. If for some reason I can't do what I have to do, my workout and et cetera, looking at it like, oh, I got to start again. It's more of a, okay, so this happened and I just keep going because I'm not, I'm not looking at it like a start and finish thing. I'm just, this is like a new way for me to function. I'm just doing this new thing where I now work out and I eat this way and I'm mindful of my macros, etc. So it's not, I'm starting and I'm stopping this at some point because that just makes it feel like I failed. Absolutely. It's, it's completely different. You know, and I I don't know where that starting and stopping, I feel like that has a lot to do with kind of the weight loss culture and the industry in general of kind of that feeling of starting and stopping because everything was so restrictive that I feel like it kind of created that a little bit. I'm not sure, Mm -hmm. but something that my mind as I, as you were talking, I relate a lot to that and how my mindset recently has been shifting for the last couple of years is that when I get sick or if I go on vacation or if I kind of did that, like stop. I actually think of it as a pause. And that way of shifting my mindset of like, I'm in a pause allows me to feel like I can go up and then pause and then up and then pause. Exactly. And that like kind of stair climber experience in my mindset, the way I look at it now is so much better than thinking of like a roller coaster of like this, how my mind used to think before. Or, or worse, like if you're going up the stairs, you're going this way and then something happened and then you got to go to the bottom again and start again. That's just, that's what, that's what used to bother me so much. You're paused for a sec, but then you keep going and you keep going. That's it. Yeah. Not stop. It's, it's part of the journey, part of uh, learning these little things to kind of work with yourself and go towards those things that used to cripple you and now look at them in a different way and kind of, instead of running away from them, I really do go towards all of my excuses and fear, even everything in general. It's so interesting how much you can actually be more powerful and bigger than those obstacles if we start facing them. And so I appreciate you coming on and sharing your experience because a lot, of the, a lot of people can relate to you and ex- your experience of being a mom, of having children and also your business and just trying to do all the things. And, and then they're going to look back at you and go, well, how in the hell did you stay fit through this whole process? And so now we'll be like, well, we got a podcast of how she did it. <laughs> <laughs> the accomplished yeah. feeling for you, right? Of just like doing all these things, mastering all these things in your life, but yet still being able to have yourself as a priority through that whole process. I think that's the key, actually. Once you shift that in your mind. I mean, like I said before, time was such a huge, huge, huge excuse for me. Just no time. But in reality, it was that I did not think allocating time for this for myself was something worth doing. That was the real reality because I'm doing it now. And I'm still busy in the same way. So hopefully so that helps somebody else. Yeah. So if somebody's listening right now and they just don't feel worthy to have make that investment for themselves or prioritize themselves, what is something that you would let them know? Well, first of all, of course, that you are worthy. Figure out what it is that's making you feel like this is not worth doing or that you you don't have the same right as everybody else to feel a certain way or look a certain way or say, oh, I, I work out and I, I take care of myself and, and feel good and have the longevity that I want to have because all these things are kind of related. And if you really want to say, at least for me, I have kids, so I... I always take them into consideration. What's making you feel a certain way? Like like you don't deserve to have the time to do the things that you know you need to do. Figure out like what 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 is that? Making like, you go towards it. Look at that, you guys. Making yeah. like, you go inward and go towards it. I look, that's like the whole theme of today's conversation is go towards it. It's interesting. I never thought I would be saying this. <laughs> to anybody but i like it i have this other ladies that i know from from my belly dance group that i've that i've told you about and they some of them are 
working on themselves and doing certain things and they're lost on certain things and I'm like I know all these things now and I feel like I want to tell you so many things and and I pointed them towards this and hopefully they'll listen I would love to tell everybody else and just help them I'm pretty sure there's somebody else out there who might feel similar to or, or going through the experiences that I have so I, I appreciate you opening up and just sharing me with what your truth and what feels, what you feel, you know, it's a feeling, right? It's a feeling of what is like a next step in your journeys. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbell. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. You have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty bands and barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.